Hello and welcome to the Model 401, my name's Ross, and today we're looking at the Hatchet Build the Titanic Issue 1. Um, so this is kind of like the fold-out you get with the first issue. It's just a really nice little piece here to explain what you get with the subscription. Issue 2 for instance. And I will be building this on hopefully a weekly basis by the time I get all the magazines and all the issues out. So this is kind of like a fold-out pamphlet you get with issue 1. I'll just show you this right now. As you can see on the inside, you've got a lovely um, image of the model here. Some photographs at the bottom of the ship, including an Olympic here, just to show you, just to show you the actual ship itself. Because come aboard, the most famous ship of all time, 110 years on. This is the incredible ocean liner brought to life. This is a die cast model. Um, I will be building this all the way through to the, the final final stage. As you can see, it comes to smoke, comes to the interior, electronic lights, as well as the decking detail and so on. Photo etched parts, wooden decking. So it should be a pretty cool model. So just open this up. As you can see, it gives you a really nice idea of what the model will look like once it's finished. Say so about 134 centimeters long, and here we've got some little photos here, images to show you what you're going to get. So you've got accurate detail, photo etched brass, a metal hull, deck details, remote control. And up here we have realistic accessories, such as benches, rigging, and other details. As you can see, you've got the bridge section here. You've got lifeboats, smoke effect. So the funnel appears smoke, appears, appears to smoke. The funnel appears to smoke. The effect is controlled by an electronic device, which I assume will be the remote control. And we also have the die cast hull, working lights, as well as a running engine and rotating propellers. Now I know for a very long time I've been wanting to build a magazine-based or sort of subscription-based Titanic model. Although I am building the Trumpeter Titanic, uh, 1200 scale. This is also at 100 to 1200 scale as well. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to make this into Titanic, or Britannic, or Olympic. At the moment I think I'm going towards an Olympic model, um, just because I am making a Titanic with a trumpeter um, 1 200 scale. Uh, I don't think I need two next to each other, where converting this to a Britannic or converting this into an Olympic I think will be very, um, could be quite interesting. Okay, so in this section it does tell you what you get in your magazine. So you get step-by-step -step instructions. The Giant of the Sea, which discover how the Magnificent Liner was came, came to build. I can't say this today. Well, I can't read today. So in this section, you do get... Um... So in this section, you do get a, a sort of breakdown of what you get inside your magazine. You have the Giant of the Sea, discover how the Magnificent Liner came to be built, and design features that made her unsinkable. A date with Destiny, to find out how the ship met her watery end, and meet the crew and the owners of the ship. The Edwardian Era, revel in the spectacle of luxury that characterised the Edwardian Era, and then life on board, drain passengers on board to find out how the different classes were treated. So you just got a nice little breakdown there of how everything sort of comes together. And on the back of it, so you got your issue two, and your subscriber sort of uh, bonuses if you do choose to subscribe to the model. Okay and on to the actual magazine itself. So here we got Titanic, the ship, the legend, issue one. So just open it up. So as you see you got the giant of the sea here, the tragedy of the Titanic. In 1912 a vast ocean liner, the unsinkable Titanic, set across the Atlantic with full passenger complement. The voyage ended in tragedy on a calm moonless night. As you go, you've got a little breakdown of what you get here. So issue one, the giant of the sea, tragedy, the date with destiny, the Edward Smith, the captain, the giant of the sea, the Mountain of Steel part one, the Edwardian, Edwardian era, the golden age of ocean liners, and step-by-step -step instructions for the forecastle, or forecastle, depending how you want to say it. And here we go, it's just more information about the Titanic, the route it went, the iceberg for instance. And then we have little 
sort of character study here of Edward Smith, the captain, um, who was born in, actually in my own town, Stoke-on-Trent. I've been to actually the place he was born. Um, so yeah, there's some nice little history here about what, how he served and so on. We have the Mountain of Steel, which is part one. Again, it just shows you about how sort of how big the unsinkable liner was, um, how it started, and the whole story about Olympic. And you have the Golden Age of liners. So this is a really nice little sort of breakdown. It says here, ships been sailing across the Atlantic since the Pilgrim Fathers left Plymouth in the 17th century. By the early 20th century, the age of steam had led the race to the fastest and most luxurious crossings. And as you know, one of the reasons why Titanic was built was because of the Lusitania and the Mauritania with the Cunard Line, who and White Star Line wanted faster and bigger ships. So they commissioned Olympic, Titanic and Britannic. As you can see, White Star Line, Olympic and Titanic, which is the world's largest steamers at the time. And here we have some more stuff about that as well. And lastly, we have the Fuxel, which is step-by-step -step instructions on how to build the model itself. And that goes all the way up until the end now. Okay, so let's get building. Okay, so this is where everything you get with issue one. As you can see, so we've got the first part, which is the deck support panel. We have the wooden deck for the foxhole. We have the anchor at the top here. Then across here, we have the steam winches. It's got three of them. We have a skylight here. We have one of the air vents, a square of air vent. And then after that, we have a bit more bits here, which is the bollards, the ventilation duct, breakwater for both port and starboard, then we have the hatch, then here we have the steam valves, which you should only need four, but we're going to go for them five, and we have four cap stands here as well. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take the deck support panel here, and we need to attach the wooden deck onto this here. So the first thing I would do is make sure you line that up. Just make sure that everything sort of fits and you've got it in a good place where you want it to be. And as you can see, it's quite a few. Don't know how well you can see that here, but there's an air bubble here. They're going to have to try and get out when we put this on here. So, I'm just going to peel this in the back. Now, some people might want to actually glue this down. I want to see how well it goes first. But I would attempt putting this on the corner. And line that up. And then just rolling that up then from here onwards. Just spreading your fingers out. Just try to get all those air bubbles out if you can. Now over time, these air bubbles might come back through, so best just try and push down as many of these air bubbles as you possibly can. And there we go, that looks pretty good. So you just want to keep an eye out when you're putting these on, that you get this ridge here, and you put it on the back ridge here. There's like a little lip here, that just stops you from putting it on too much. That looks pretty good now. Again, if it gets too loose, I'll probably just end up sticking it down with some other wood glue, or we can use PVA glue for this. Just to help. It might even help you to um, to fit this better as well. By the time you've had anything else on there, it'll help to hold everything down. But you just got to be mindful because, like, you might not if you can see this, but it's sort of lifting here. So you just got to be careful to make sure that's all down. Okay, so for the next step, we need to add the anchor. So let's get the anchor here. 
And you want to put this facing towards the stern into these two slots here. So we're just going to put that in. And it hopefully should just click in. So let's just see what we've got here. It's a bit tight at the moment, actually. Should fit in. So we're going to go back end first. Into the hole, and then... There we go. That's in there. They want to add in the winches in the back. Now these have got two holes, one bigger and one smaller. You can see there's this bigger one there, there's a smaller one there. So there's only one way you can put this in. And these are reflected here as well. Bigger and small. So you just want to clip them in. And they should snap in. And there's the last one, it should be here. There we go. And that's what you've got so far. And then we want to add the advent of events in here. So we have event here. And we have an event here, which I believe is actually a cover, not a vent. And that's our ship. Okay, and then the next step is to add the ballards and the vent here. So this is a skylight hatch. Not a vent, sorry. And then this should go back here in those two holes there. So just want to pull it in. And hopefully it'll click in. Try the other side. There we go. Now just click in there. As you can see, you've got some holes here. I'll probably end up gluing these eventually, just to make sure everything sticks in better from underneath. But there we go. That's what we should have right now. And then we're going to putting on these little bollards now. Again, these are also bigger and smaller on each side. So we're just going to clip these in. Again, matching the bigger hole and small hole. And this is the last one, just the back here. And push in. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'll let them were just clicking in there. And then you can see the model itself as it is. Very nicely made. I would recommend probably painting these as well once you've got everything sort of clipped in. Um, just to add more detail to them. For instance, I might paint these a bit more green. Um, edit some of these as well. So now we want to add on the breakwaters here and these will just clip in to these sections here so it should be two holes either side and you want to make sure that the ridges are on that side there you can see that those little ridges there again get your ridges you just want to slot them in there should be three holes here but they all just fit in nicely
just like that. Now hopefully, the hatch will then go in. Should be that way, I believe. That fits in there quite nicely too. And then we have these next steps. So we have a little vent there. Which we're going to put this little hole here. And again, you might want to put a small black dot in there or even like um, a red dot, as some of the ships do have red in intakes. Um, or you can just put like a sort of darker shade of white, like a light grey, just into this to make a bit more depth into that as well. And then on to the final steps then. So we need four of these here to go into these top holes here. And then we need four the bollards here as well. Just go in there as well. Sorry, the cap sands into these little slots here. So let's just put these in now. Little very small pieces here. We'll just put them into this section here. Now you might want to be a bit delicate with these because they are quite thin. I think if you push on too hard, they might end up breaking. But these things are going all right. So there we go. Everything is now in on this model. And hopefully it'll look all right once it's all been completed. As I said, you've got one part left. Um, so I'll just put it back on with a small bag you've got to give them the kit and just save it just in case you need it or you, you break one or you need to do a repair one later at the stage. So thank you for watching part one of the Build Titanic by Hatchet Partworks. Um, like I said, I'm hoping to try to get this up weekly, if not a few more within, um, within the week, depending on how the issues come out. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this um, this episode, and I look forward to the next one. Catch you later.